Hello again, everyone. I'm Kaz Beal, and this is Casual Conversations, where we have some nice conversations, casually, of course, with very important people in our world. Today, our very special guest is Marlene Franco. Hi, Marlene. How are you? Hi, Cass. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to have you on the show. And our subject today is tomatoes. And guess what I have right here? Look at that. A beautiful red <laughs> tomato. Huh? Let's show that to everybody. Look at that. That's beautiful. They're wonderful. I'm getting, I'm sure. <laughs> They're wonderful. They taste very well. But you have some very important information to tell us about tomatoes because you're into organic gardening. Yes, absolutely. And one of the things is that we should definitely grow our own tomatoes or at least buy organic tomatoes only since they're listed as one of the dirty dozen in terms of the high level of pesticides that they use to grow them, especially in greenhouses during the winter months and, and the, the season when it's a little cooler, they're really high in uh, all the different pesticides that they apply. And this has been tested by the environmental working group. So that's really important to really uh, grow it. The other reason you want to grow your own tomatoes is because, you know, yeah. usually you get to the store and you have tomatoes that have been picked not totally ripe. There's nothing like the taste of a really ripe tomato. And also yeah. the varieties, there, there are hundreds of varieties. We're never gonna be able to grow that you know, on a commercial scale. So it gives you the opportunity to have all these wonderful tasting tomatoes from you know, like purple ones and all the way different. Right. I can't tell you how many, how many places I've been to and everybody says Jersey tomato is the best. Jersey tomatoes are the Absolutely. best. Absolutely. We have Not a great right now, but you know, Jersey tomatoes, they're very tasty, and I just love planting them and uh, and just eating them. Great. Me too. I love them. I can't say that I don't. <laughs> so so tell us about the types of tomatoes um, that are out well, there. One of the ways that I think it's a great thing, especially uh, is growing different varieties, but not just different varieties, but also different types of tomatoes. And there are some tomatoes that can grow from like say two feet and they, there are tomatoes that can grow 10 feet and above. And the, the issue here is whether you grow with determinate tomatoes or indeterminate tomatoes. And the indeterminate tomatoes, they never stop growing. So if you're down south or if you're in a warmer climate, these things can get to be 10, 12, 14 feet high. And they- That's the, taller than me or you. Yeah, absolutely. But the difference is, is that because they take a long time to grow, they're mm -hmm. also usually later producing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. While the, the uh, determinate tomatoes, and they are usually um, faster to, you know, to, they stop growing at a particular time and then just stop producing. So there's no pruning involved. And that's really important because the indeterminate ones, you really need to prune. And and the determinate tomatoes is, for instance, your Roma tomatoes. You'll get them sometimes all at once. So you have to be ready to can or to do something with them, make sauce right. or whatever you need to do, which is fine. But they, they're very fast also. And then they have the regular, you know, regular, uh, you know, eating tomatoes that are also determinate. But then what happens is you can start harvesting them once, you know, once the weather gets warm because they are a warm season uh, crop. And it needs to be at the night temperatures is what you worry about. A lot of people say, well, it was 60 degrees outside today. And that's perfect. It says it's above 45 degrees, but it's a 45 degree temperature at night that you really need. Yeah. That's kind of the ideal. Your borderline, if you go anything below that, that they make it frostbite and the plant gets frostbite and you'll, it won't recover. So, so the thing with this is that by having these different varieties of tomatoes from determinate to which are earlier to a mid-season tomato to an indeterminate that's a late season tomato you could easily have tomatoes for like six seven eight months and wow. depending on what, how far south you are may almost like literally all year round so that's that's why i recommend also that you just don't pick one kind of variety and and go with that you no know, multiple varieties and and go from there yeah marlene People can go to gardeningtheorganicway.com to find out more information about Marlene and we'll, a new book she has out. We'll talk about it in a few seconds also. But about tomatoes, I try growing them and sometimes like this dark rot or some stuff happens. Like, you know, it's fun growing them, but there's issues run into with uh, problems. So tell me about a few problems with tomatoes. Well, one of the biggest things is that um, they, they call it cat facing which produces kind of a deformed fruit. This one is, you know, this is a very low level of it, 
but sometimes you have lots of rain and this ha does happen in New Jersey and I'm sure other areas and as we have climate change, it even happens more so where you get a lot of rain and then all of a sudden you get a drought. And what happens is, is that when you get uh, this drought and this uneven watering, then the, the calcium can't quite reach it and it begins to, to rot out. And the after effects of that is that you turn around and you get all kinds of bugs coming in and, and eating away at the plant. So one way to counteract that is one to have even moisture. And the only way you're gonna get that is really if you do some mulching, you know, do straw mulch and nice thick two inches so that you retain that even moisture. So especially in the hot summer months like July and August, at least in the Northeast and in other parts of the country where it gets really, really hot, um, it's, it's just crazy. So that's the main thing you have to remember about that. What about bugs? What about bugs? Ooh. Oh my God. One of the biggest ones is a giant tomato hornworms, which literally they're about two inches, you know, and you have aphids and you have Colorado potato beetles as well as flea beetles. I would say the easiest ones to take care of are the horn, the hornworms because they're so big. The only thing is you have to find them. It's like you will wake up the next morning and your two feet or three foot plant could practically be eaten away. <laughs> You're like, what happened here? Wow. And, and basically you, they, they camouflage themselves because they're green and they'll be hanging from the underside of the leaf, kind of sleeping off during the day because they'll munch away at night. Um, so you have to look for them. And unfortunately, the only thing you can do is kind of crush them as much as I don't like to kill anything. But that's I the know. only way you can really get rid of them. Uh, flea beetles, it usually happens uh, during the hot, dry summer season. And, you know, you can look at different ways to to control them. And I have a lot of information on the website for that, how to control these things. Aphids are much easier to control because in aphids, you just mix some uh, like a gallon of water with about a tablespoon or so, a table and a half spoon of uh, regular dishwashing uh, soap, and you mix it up with it really good. And then you spray the whole plant, especially underneath the plants. And if the plants are big enough, you can also hose them off. And that usually yeah. takes care of, of, of the, uh, you know, the aphids and stuff. Okay, well, let's talk about your book. Uh, it's 251 pages of engaging practical guide and understanding why we should garden organically as well as every detail on how to garden successfully. How did you get the time to do all that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally spent my vacation time doing that. That's what I did. And I'm I, huh. traditionally I was a I was doing land. I ran my own landscaping business. Uh, okay. So consequently, in the winter time, I didn't snow plow. I'm not. I'm a to total snowbird. I would go south or go somewhere and warm. And what I did is I bring my laptop and I wrote. I wrote. I wrote as the time go by. And also, a lot of people ask me questions constantly. They were asking me about all kinds of things. And that's when I realized that I should write a book explaining and what the needs of the people were, especially if you've never gardened before. And that was really the target. People who have never gardened, there's a lot of assumptions that are made when, when you know what you're talking about and you assume that other people do too. So I took it from that angle, from that perspective. I don't know anything and therefore why should I, why should I be organic? Right. What are some of the basic things that you need to plan out before you even start gardening. So I have a whole chapter at that. What is it about organic? What's the basis or the foundation such as the soil and how do you improve that? And how do you make it better? And how do you maintain it? Or how do you, a lot of people wanted to be self-sufficient without uh, necessarily buying, a, an going out and buying an organic bag of fertilizer. Then I talk about that. And then I went through all the different families of vegetables, at least the most popular ones, like 12 of them. And I explain it not from the point of view of like, Roman being in the Northeast or being in the South, mm -hmm. or anything, but from the point of view of temperature, what are the right temperatures? So that way it made it simple. Okay, Marlene, about a few seconds left. Why would you, why should someone do organic, organic gardening? I know it's a whole book on it. Summarize it in like one sentence or two, go. <laughs> Your health. The bottom line is the health of, of ourselves and the health of the planet. That's really what's it all about. And right now, I think people are very aware of the fact that we are in a crisis of the planet and it's a, in and of itself. And the balance, everything's gone out of balance as a consequence of all the chemicals we've used, in our bodies as well as the whole environment. So going organic, it's one major step to bringing healing to ourselves and to our planet. 
and create beautiful tomatoes, Jersey oh, tomatoes. Wonderfully, great tasting <laughs> stuff. That's the other reason. That's the main reason, really. Yeah. Also. <laughs> Tasty. Well, thank you very much. It's been great. We'll have you back again to talk about soil and many other issues in the future. So thank you very much for being a great guest on Casual Conversations. Any final words? No. Thank you, Cass. I really appreciate it and look forward to having being back. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.